Close your eyes and watch your breath. When it comes in, notice where you feel it coming in, all the way through the in-breath, and when it goes out, where do you feel it go out? Just watch that again and again and again, and ask yourself, is it comfortable? If it's not, you can change. How do you change it? Well, you can think. How, what would longer feel like? And see how the body responds. What would shorter feel like? Faster, slower, heavier, lighter. See how the body responds to the idea that it could breathe in a more comfortable way. Or just ask yourself each time you're breathing, what would feel best now? And see how the body responds. You have to ask questions if you're going to learn anything here. It's, there are instructions on what to do, but you have to ask questions for yourself as well. The Buddha talks about how being easy to teach is uh, one of the blessings of life. In other words, you learn a lot of good things that way. Because one, if you're not easy to teach, no one else is going to want to teach you. But what does it mean to be easy to teach? It doesn't mean you just do what you're told without thinking. You give things a try. And if they don't work, then you try to figure out, well, why they're not working. And then if you're not really sure of the result, then you go and you consult again. It's this back and forth of listening and thinking and working and watching. All of this working together is how you learn. Because what are you learning about here? You're learning about the mind, which is really important, because the mind is what's shaping your life. And if it's not something you understand, then you're not going to shape your life very well. Urges will come up. You don't know where they came from. You don't know whether you can trust them or not. But if you get used to observing them, using the breath as your foundation of where to watch, just stay right here, and you'll see an intention come up in the mind. You can tell what kind of quality is behind it. Otherwise, we just run with the intentions. Then we find out later, oh, that wasn't a really good one to run with. It took a way off path. So you listen, and then you try things out, and then you think about them, and then you go and consult again, and then you go try them out again. And working this way, because then you learn a lot about your mind, because you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time you sit down and meditate. There are other people who've had experience before, and you can take advantage of their experience. But at the same time, the, the words they use and the words you use in your mind may be something different. They made one thing by that word, and you may mean something else. So you have to test things to make sure you really understand what's going on. And not just understand the message, but also turn around and use these tools to understand your mind. It's only when you understand your mind that you can gain some control over it. It's like understanding animals. If you don't understand the psychology of dogs, you can have a dog that's going to take over your house. But if you understand the psychology, you know when to be stern with them, when to be gentle with them. And then you have something useful around the house, somebody who can defend you from invaders and someone who gives you company when you're alone. So it's the same with the mind. You've got to understand it. And the best way to understand it is to test it. Take some instructions on what other people have done to train their minds in the past and see how it works for you. And it worked for them. There must be some way that it's going to work for you. So try to figure out what, if it's not working out what's, what you're doing wrong. That way you become easy to teach and also you learn things easily as well. Being an easy learner doesn't mean you just do what you're told. You do what you're told. You give it a try, but then you say, okay, well, how are the results? And if the results aren't what you want, okay, then you can adjust things using your own powers of observation, using your own ingenuity. This is how we grow in the world. It's how we learn about things, is poking and testing. So you use this technique of staying with the breath. And any thought that comes up, you're not going to go with it. You're going to stay with the breath. And you have to learn how to avoid running with thoughts that sneak up behind you. Learn a lot about the mind when just mastering that one skill right there. So when you're easy to learn, you learn a lot. When you're easy to teach, you learn a lot. And then that knowledge becomes yours.